In this video, we see how to calculate moment diagrams and frames. It's assumed that you already know how to compute moment diagrams and beams, and that you already know how to compute reactions and forces at hinges in frames. This is an introduction to the topic and a first example. We'll start out with a qualitative overview of the procedure. This is the frame that we use in the example. It's a portal frame with a hinge in one column, a three kip ladder or load, and the dimensions given there. This is a four step procedure. Step number one, solve for all the reactions and all the forces at the hinges. If we do that, we obtain the following free body diagram. Once again, this overview will be qualitative, so we won't have any numbers involved. Once we have this, step two is to separate all of the flexural members into straight line segments. We'll determine all the unknown forces at the cuts. We repeat the free body diagram up above, and we slice it into two different members. You'll notice that there's a force that occurs right at the end of one of the members. We have a choice. We can place that on either of the two members. Here, I've chosen to place it on the vertical member. Next, we'll solve for the remaining forces using equilibrium on each piece. Starting on the horizontal member, we have an unknown shear and moment at the cut. That shear and moment, once we compute it, gets translated equal and opposite onto the column. Once we have that, we can check equilibrium on the column. We'll number these two members, members number one and two as shown there, so that we can make future reference to them. The next step is to compute the moment diagrams. We'll place all of the segments horizontally, and once they're horizontal, they're just like a beam. Do everything you know how to do to compute the moment diagrams. If we look at member two, we would compute the moment diagram shown here. Look at member number one, Forget about the axial forces because those don't factor in to the moment diagram. Obtain the moment diagram shown here. Once again, this is a qualitative overview and we'll go into more detail shortly. Lastly, we need to summarize the results. We have a bunch of different moment diagrams for different members. We now need to reassemble them with the correct orientation. So if we start with the two moment diagrams that we just calculated, look at a sketch of the structure, place the moment diagrams in their correct location. So this has been an overview of the procedure. Let's go through the same steps with the same structure, but now putting numbers on the problem. So let's start once again at step one, solve for all the reactions and the forces at the hinges. We would obtain the following free body diagram. It's assumed that you already know how to do this. So take a moment, pause the video, and calculate these reactions. Make sure that you can obtain these values and that you can complete this step successfully. So now you've finished computing these forces, you're convinced that these numbers are correct. Let's start breaking up this structure. Step two is to separate flexural members into straight line segments. Determine all the unknown forces at the cut. We're looking at the horizontal member that we previously called member number two we see that at the cut, we have two unknown forces, an unknown shear force and an unknown bending moment. We just use basic concepts of equilibrium to determine these two forces. Some of the forces in the vertical direction tells us that the shear force is 1.44 kips. Some of the moments about the cut tells us that the moment is equal to the vertical force of 1.44 kips times the moment arm of 25 feet which results in a moment of 36 kip feet. So now we carry these values onto the diagram. Now that we have a fully solved diagram, we move to the next member. So what I've shown here for member one is all the forces that we knew from before. The three kip lateral load to the right, which is the applied load, and the two forces at the bottom, which are the reactions that we computed already. We'll take the previously calculated forces of 36 kip feet for the moment and 1.44 kips for the shear force, and we'll move these equal and opposite from member two onto member one. Let's start with the vertical force. The vertical force of 1.44 kips pointing down on member two becomes a vertical force of 1.44 kips pointing up on member one. Now the moment. 
the clockwise moment of 36 kip feet on member 2 becomes a counterclockwise moment of 36 kip feet on member 1. The vertical force is a shear force on member 2, but it's an axial force on member 1. That's because the orientation of the members are different. Looking at the moment diagram for member 1, there's no more unknowns. And this will always be the case when you reach the last member of a structure. If you're on the last member, check equilibrium. Horizontal equilibrium, the three kip force at one end is three kips at the other end. For vertical equilibrium, the force of 1.44 kips at one end is equal to 1.44 kips in the other direction at the other end. If I sum moments about the cut, I have three kips acting over a 12 foot moment arm. That's equal to the 36 kip feet that I already carried over. So these are three independent checks. They all check out. I'm confident with my work and I can now move on to step three. In step three, I compute the diagrams. I place all the straight line segments horizontally and I compute the moment diagram. Do this with any technique you have already. The graphical technique is most often the best. If I compute moment diagrams for these two beams, I get the moment diagram shown here. It's assumed that you already know how to compute moment diagrams for the beams, although definitely not as quickly as I've done it here. So take a moment, pause the video, and actually compute the moment diagrams. Make sure that you can arrive at this result. Now that you've verified that you can compute these moment diagrams, we're ready to move on to the next step. Before moving on to the next step, I'll make one very strong suggestion. Memorize the moment diagram for a cantilever. Each of these represents a cantilevered flexural member, a moment and a shear at one end, and a single force at the other end. This occurs very often when we compute moment diagrams and frames, and so it'll be very useful for you to simply have the moment diagram for a cantilever segment memorized and not have to go through all the different steps. Step four is to summarize the results. We want to reassemble the moment diagrams with the correct orientation. And this is a good moment to point out that I'm showing my moment diagrams not as positive or negative, but I'm showing them with the actual curvature that the beam has. So positive curvature is concave up, negative curvature is concave down, but that applies to beams that are oriented horizontally. Once you start talking about columns that are vertical, well, positive and negative becomes a little bit ambiguous, but the actual physical curvature shown in the diagram is never ambiguous. So we bring down one of the moment diagrams to the location on the structure. We bring the other moment diagram to the location on the structure. You notice how the curvature changes in that case from concave up to concave left. That still gives me the correct physical meaning of what the moment is doing to the member, how the moment is bending the member. And this is our final answer. So we get rid of everything else. We bring this moment diagram front and center, and the problem is finished.